Okay, I would like to call to order this meeting of the Norfolk School Committee for Tuesday, February 12th at 7.05 p.m. As we do with all our meetings, we begin with our mission statement. The Norfolk Public Schools offers a safe, joyful, and challenging learning environment that meets the needs of our diverse students. Through school, family, and community partnerships, we provide an education that inspires lifelong learners and cultivates caring and productive citizens of our ever-changing world. Roll call. Jeff Chalmers. Mark Flaherty. Kelly Peterson. Thomas Doyle. Sean Dooley. Ingrid Alerty. And Pam. <laughs> uh, what I would like to do is remind everyone that we this this um, meeting is being taped and uh, going to be broadcast audio and visual uh, visual uh, via NCTV. And so just keep that in mind when uh, with any of your any of your public comments. And so as we like to do with all our meetings, we'll begin with public comment. If you have a public comment, if you could go to the microphone. Introduce yourself and say your either relationship with the school or if you're a, a parent or resident, uh, your um, street address. You ready? You're it. <laughs> <laughs> we actually have one today. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> I'm Susan. Which is, is that on? Yeah. I'm okay. Susan Klein and I live at 48 Berkshire Street. And I would like the school committee to take into consideration. Um, I'm not really sure how this works, so I apologize. No, um, but I would like the consideration of a policy put into place where parents are notified without giving any information on the child, but notified if a child within our school system makes any kind of physical threat towards the school. Obviously, one-on-one -on -one students, that's not what we're speaking about. Just, you know, obviously I'm speaking about the situation that happened earlier and other situations that have since happened. Um, um, I understand privacy issues. I just think there's a way that we can come up with that says, you know, we've handled it per our policy. Please don't worry. Your children's safety is our top concern. But we're letting you know this happened today or yesterday so that we have the right to either ask questions or send our children to school, not send our children to school. Basically, as parents, use our own judgment of something that, of that nature that occurred in the schools. Okay. That's, I just would like for you guys to discuss adhering the policy to that. All right, thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Nope. Okay. Okay, moving on, administrative items. Let's see, we have gifts. We've received $1,125.84 from the Norfolk TPA. Um, books, playground, playground supplies, and, and a grant, grade five grant, um, all for HOD. And we see, received $35 of a SAC program supplies uh, from, a, from a family. And so would like to make a, someone to make a motion to accept the $1,160.84. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, that's it. Any other uh, announcements? As we do every year, um, we have to vote on fundraisers. Um, and if you look at Exhibit 2, we have a list of fundraisers that are being sponsored by the schools. Scholastic Movie Night, Movie Night, TPA Bake Sale at the Parents Conference and the Art Fairs, TPA Mixed Bag Fundraiser, Dana-Farber and Red Sox Rally Against Cancer, TPA Shoe Drive, Jump Rope for Heart, and Rainforest Mix Sale, all at the HOD. And then at Freeman, TPA Bake Sales, TPA Read Across America, Coins for Cures, TPA Scholastic Book Fair, TPA Movie Night, Kids Art Fair, uh, Jump Rope for Heart, NSTAR, TPA Mix Bag Fundraiser, and the TPA uh, Shoe Drive. I don't see on here a 
isn't the NTA currently doing a fundraiser? Yes, that's the um, Oh, it is, okay. Okay, so that's... It's really NTA. NTA, okay, that's... Yeah. I'm like, I knew I got something at home just yesterday. <laughs> Okay, so that's Read Across America, and that should actually be at both schools as well, right? Okay. Okay, is there a motion to accept these fundraisers? So moved. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Okay, um, I know there was a, isn't there a, also another fundraiser going on right now, Soup? That was already done, so. It okay. should have come before the committee, but I think it was on the list for last year. Okay. But, um, we didn't add it because it's complete. Okay. And so what we did this year was, since it wasn't done at the beginning of the school, it's kind of confusing exactly how it was done last year. We just did, um, I, uh, Pam put together all the fundraisers mm -hmm. for the, through the end of the year, end of this school year. Then in August, we'll vote, you know, August or September, we'll vote for the 2013-14 school year. So, Okay. Um, no further comments. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. 2013-2014 calendar. I had a comment on the calendar. Okay. Um, we shared the calendar with the um, NTA for feedback. Um, and one thing that was raised was the May day that's an early scheduled now on May 23rd as an early release. Um, in the past has been a full day, a uh, full professional development day, and it's been used for the purpose of class placement. Um, teachers work on instructional groupings in the morning and in the afternoon, specialists, special education staff, their um, school counselors look at the list as well. Last year it was changed to be a half day of school because of the moving project and because you didn't want to delay the end. So when we created the calendar, originally we kept it as a half day, but the NTA would like to consider going back to the historic full day for um, class placement placement that they've had. Which would move the end last day of school to the 17th? To the 17th. So last year, you amended the Memorial the Day, uh, did we amend it? You amended it to a half day because there were snow days and hurricane and you didn't want to delay the close of school because of the move okay. um, for Freeman Kennedy. But in the past, prior to that, it's been a full okay. um, day. Do, do, now, does that, how does that affect the teacher's contract with a... Same number, the same number of days. No, but does it affect... The professional development? I mean, they, we're, adding a half. we're adding a half day of yeah. professional development. Um, it, no, it would, be the, it would be the same, because last year they, they had an early release and they used the afternoon for placement. So it's still a full work day for the but, teachers. Well, I guess as of right now, you had to schedule for a half day development on 26. Now you've made that a full day. So in effect, you've added a second half of professional Only for, development. So isn't that... No, that because be it's the... Work? It's a te the teachers worked a full day anyway. It was only a half day for students. The teachers still were here that full day because they worked in placement in the afternoon. Okay. Right, uh, but I guess we're going to be adding a day at the end. So, so well, I guess uh, per their contract, how many? F You'll be adding a half day for students on the end. Right. But per their contract, how many days of professional development? Are they? It's not, it's not defined in the contract, the number okay. of professional development. The teacher work days are defined. Okay. I'll have to, I'd have to get back to you on that. Right, so there's an additional three. Okay, so that's one. And then we have the original ones, okay. Okay. Any other discussion? Is there a motion to accept this calendar as revised by Dr. Olardi? So moved. Second. Any discussion? So school will now end on the 17th? Yeah. And that will be Assuming a half day? Tuesday. Yeah, half day. Assuming no snow days. Yes. Assuming no snow days. That's a big assumption lately, but so does that mean we'll this, hope for that. That means the 16th isn't going to be a half day anymore. 16th too, is right? no, no, day will be a full day, and the 17th will be a half day. And so the Friday before Memorial Day will be off for students. Mm -hmm. Okay, so yeah, twenty six is Memorial Day, I guess. Right? Twenty six is Memorial Day, so, so it'll be a four, a day, four weekend. day weekend. Okay. Okay. Any other discussion? 
No. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 That's unanimously. Um, while we're on the subject of calendar, I would like to kind of bring up and just kind of get the committee's thoughts on this. Currently, the way the calendar is running with the snow days that we've had, including the ones um, in October, school is currently going to end on Friday the 21st. Or I don't have the year's calendar, but it's Friday. For, so on a Friday. Um, I want to kind of talk about and what we did last year because we were bumping up on the, to a similar thing was on uh, Good Friday, which is March 29th, I believe. Um, possibly making that a half day um, if in between now and our, you know, just kind of, you know, think about it, see if, if we like the idea, um, just so there's not, you know, if we have one more snow day between now and our next school committee meeting, we can add that in and as opposed to having the last day of school being on a Monday. Yeah, I, I honestly don't know any parents that I've talked to that thinks that coming back for a Monday or a Tuesday yeah. following a weekend to finish school is a good idea. Right. I did run that by the um, the union briefly. We had to delay our monthly meeting, mm -hmm. um, but just for preliminary thoughts and, and people felt that if we had an additional snow day between now and March, um, it might make sense to add half day so that the last day of school is not on a Monday. Um, but I don't think you need to vote on that until March because we'd still have time after the next school committee to revise the calendar and let people know. Um, mm -hmm. So everyone like that idea of, I guess, I guess my only worry about, you know, doing it on March 12th or March 13th is since it is a full day off, you know, if, if people are making plans for Easter weekend, Easter weekend yeah. going going to grandma's, <laughs> yeah, you're going to driving to grandma's if they're planning on leaving on Thursday night. Um, I guess I would want to try to get that out there, you know. Yeah, because that would be kind of last minute notice. I'd be a little two weeks ahead of time. Yeah, you know, I, I don't I don't know if it's worth putting it out there, you know, just in a connect ad that this is something that's being considered if there is an additional snow day between now between now and then. For this particular reason, so the last day of school isn't on a Monday, you know, with the graduation. What do you guys think about that? More notice, the better. Yeah, I don't, yeah. yeah, the more notice, the better. So we could put it out tentatively, then still leave it to you to vote on in March. Where's the sergeant at arms? <laughs> I'll take care of it. <laughs> Not the riff. <laughs> Does that make sense if we put it out tentatively uh, yeah. to inform parents? The camera refocus on, on the camera, the, uh, on, the, <laughs> on the phone that's playing? Okay, good. Game <laughs> earlier. Okay. I can do that. Okay, thank you. All right. Uh, if you look at Exhibit 4, um, we have some past dues and past um, fees um, that we've had. That this has been revised, right? You have the revised. You have a copy of the yeah. revised. Okay. So as, as of now, we have over $60,000 in in fees that have not been paid. And these are people that have been called numerous times and have been sent numerous letters. I mean, we still have you know, $9,000 from 2011 available out there. Um, so one of the things I wanted to, um, Dr. Alardi and I were, were kind of talking about is just kind of starting to play with the, you know, tweaking the policy on, on something like this in so much as, you know, you know, after three months, they're, you know, no longer allowed to participate in whatever, you know, once you're over three months in arrears without making a payment plan or, or, or any discussion, you're no longer out, allowed to participate, be it band or, or um, kindergarten or anything along those lines. And after six months of continuing to refuse to respond or set up a payment plan or things like that is uh, uh, sent it to collections. Yeah. Um, and what I, would, what I would propose to do is that we change our contracts to the collections um, you know, set it up that, you know, I know we were, having, we were struggling with the fines before, and instead of having fines be, you know, look, you're, you still owe us 100% plus you incur any collections expense. Yeah. Because, if, you know, a collections agency is going to run 15, 20%. Mm -hmm. um, so if someone owes, you know, $3,000, now it's a substantial, you know, if, you know, if it's six months and they refuse to re return our phone calls, you know, you have um, tonight. We have a third reading of that policy, and and we did um, 
add the statement at our last meeting that instead of charging a late fee that um, after multiple notices that there, the participation in tuition-based programs could be impacted. And, and I do think that um, if parents are notified after the third notice, and we're talking three to five months, that they need to contact the office to make a payment plan or to bring their account to balance or their particip continued participation is in jeopardy. I think we'll get a lot of um, return for that. I think we'll, I think it'll help us really close out a lot of these accounts. Um, and, and again, we <coughs> want to be sensitive to people that have financial need. If the, if the parents contact us, I've already met with several parents after last notices went out to develop a, an individual payment schedule, um, you know, that fits the family's circumstances, or to to make them aware of financial aid that's available. Uh, but the problem is, is that we have you know we have bus fees that we're still trying to collect from last year that that you know the students rode the bus all year, um, and and again we've got ten thousand um, dollars of fees outstanding from kindergarten tuitions for last year. So we're carrying a, a negative balance there. So in total, it's almost 70, or actually with the revised one, it's almost about $60,000 of past due accounts. So I just wanted you, before you read the third reading of the policy, to have a sense of the scope of the issue um, and the amount of time that's going into trying to track down and contact parents with no um, response on that. Do we know about how much is like the 9,000 about average for what we carry carry over each year of being owed I didn't run the I didn't run a long-term history on that because the band fees and the bus fees are new um, and the kindergarten tuition has been changed. changed so I'm not sure the history will give us you know much picture okay. there um, you know Sean did mention the idea of, of adding collections yeah. um, I'm, I'm not sure if we tell parents you know you have a month to make an appointment or your child is no longer eligible to ride the bus that might be enough. We right. haven't had any sort of consequence for lack of payment in the past. Um, so you might want to think about starting with that and then revisiting. I just wanted to make sure that the full committee knew mm -hmm. the extent of the issue before you went to right. the third reading of that policy. And, and the reason I like the collections is from the standpoint of we spent, you know, our, you know, you know, Roxanne, we spent so much time chasing these people. By the time it's six months in, we've already made you know, they've, they've received, you know, six or seven letters, six or seven emails, you know, probably four or five phone calls. So the amount of labor we've already put into it, you know, I like just being, all right, once we get to that point, shift it off. I mean, if, you know, if you're literally not going to return any of our calls for six months, you know, because it's not like we're horrendous about this. We're like, all right, you know, 100 bucks a month, let us know what's going on yeah. so we can do something. As long as they're making any good faith effort. You know, then there's then there's no problem. And if, if anyone's in financial trouble, we have you know all the pay, payment plans yeah. as well. You know, whereas you know we have you know ten children who were in kindergarten who didn't pay, who are, who are who are now in first grade. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, and we have you know we have kids that have you know didn't pay for the bus last year and are riding the bus again this year and not paying you know not paying for the bus again this year. And it's and it's just not fair to. Some of this has been. In, I'm sorry. Okay. Okay. Thomas, go. Ahead. Um, some of this has been addressed in the potential policy we're going with the third yeah, reading so in that when if you, you there can't be it. any carryover, you can't right. be part of the bus next year. So some right. of this is already going to be addressed. Yeah. Um, so we're talking about all these folks are multiple efforts have been made even yeah. for the folks for this year. Yep. They're a multiple number of notices. months behind. Yep. Um, I don't like the collections mm -hmm. at all. Um, I would feel more comfortable with if you get to the point where if you're unable to participate in whether it be the band fee, or the pre-K, or kindergarten, whatever the case is, after X amount of time, then kind of where I think yeah. you're going, all right, well, you're not going to be part of this anymore. Now that, I think the collections, I, I get where you're going, and I understand there's there's a certain point where you have to be able to collect this money. I I don't know. I I, I don't feel comfortable with that, And but I also don't want to get to the point where you're yanking kids out of kindergarten because... Right, we really don't, don't want to do bill. that. That's, yeah. that's the last thing you want to do. I right. mean, that's horrible for the child and any other, other children as well. So... Um, I mean, the other one, you know, the band fee, the bus fees, everything like that, I'm a little less sympathetic to that. If you're unable to pay after X amount of time, then, all right, we're not riding the bus anymore. Thanks. Yeah. Yeah. And, and the, the kindergarten, with each, what we have done is with each past due notice, we advise people that they may be eligible, if, if there is a financial need, they may be eligible for reduced tuition or that they can contact to make a payment plan. So we're adding that to every reminder that goes mm -hmm. out. So for kindergarten tuition, we're hoping if families are struggling, that they just follow up with an appointment and we work something out. So we, you know, all they need to do to prevent termination of the program is contact the office and 
work out a plan. Is that language in there right now saying you, it's if you in don't the, it's contact in the proposed us, policy. The, okay, the proposed language yep. would be yep. if you don't contact us, your child will no longer be eligible to take it's, part in whatever. I think the policy reads that uh, that their participation could that that's a potential jeopardizes their yes. participation. Okay. Yep. Um, I I would tend to believe that would rattle most people's cages enough. Mm -hmm. And if they have if there's a, an issue there, then there's avenues in which they can work around that. It's not like we're trying to and we Hang could also now. try that, you know, on the third reading of the policy. We could try that this year, and I could give you a report at the end of the year of where we are, and you could consider adding. Yeah, I, I, I may be alone in that. I'd rather us go that as opposed to going all out with it. I, I don't know. I just... Well, I, I guess my, I guess my, pro my problem with the collection, I mean, the uh, reason I like the collections from the standpoint of I know how much time and effort mm -hmm. and angst it causes central office staff. Plus, you know, if someone's, you know, all right, I, I won't pay my last three months of kindergarten, and what are you going to do? Not let me go back to kindergarten next year? I mean, they're, no, they're, they they're can't be part of any other any activity. other tuition-based yeah. program the following year. So, yeah, bus band. I, mean, I think I think your other. I mean, if you want to put a lien on, you can look into that avenue. Put a lien on real estate taxes. You or can't. Something. Um, I already I looked into that. But we, but we <laughs> that can, was an easy one. <laughs> um, we can prevent people from being able to, you know, if you have an unpaid preschool balance, you can't register for full day kindergarten. Yeah. Um, or SAC or for a band or for any other tuition based right. program until, again, you've worked out either a payment plan or, or brought your it, balance. I've, I've, the one advantage I see to the collections, well, two advantages rather, I see. One is it'll, it hopefully will get people to pay, but also it takes the duty of chasing them for the payment away from our staff and we can free them up to do other things that need to get done while we have the collections people doing the chasing and then whatever they charge like Sean said we tack that onto the uh, the, the bill uh, the parent pays that we're not out of pocket a dime for the collections and we get a hundred percent return oh, on you what you get a percent yeah, you get you, no. They pay. Them. I work with collection people all the time. You get it. They take so the, their fee I, I out of it, really and their recovery the rate is very low. Well, and that's what I said, though. But you, if you create their policy that they have to pay the recovery fee, right? Yeah. I, I don't, but their I don't actual recovery the fee, it's fee, it's or I'm sorry, the recovery success rate is very low. We work, believe me, we work with them all the time. They recover about fifteen to twenty percent of this. People just don't care. Mm -hmm. um, so I think you're. I mean, you're in effect writing this money off. I mean, I don't think your rate of collection is going to prove that much. From this, I think you're, we might be better served what your suggestions are as far as really kind of tweaking the language, tweaking the policy such that there's a little more teeth to it and that you can't be part of the band in fourth grade because you still owe a pre-K fee from whatever the math that would be. Five what if we do this? And the policy also speaks to that. Um, uh, uh, the proposed policy speaks to that, not just for that child, but for any child in that family. Right. Mm -hmm. So if there's an unpaid balance that's, with the yeah, family, then no point. children in that family can enroll in tuition-based programs the following year. That's the way the policy See, I wouldn't mind reads. at least giving the collections thing. Maybe we can give it a shot for a year, yeah. you know. It's a mess. And I've seen too many people get no, 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 no. One, one at a time. Yeah. You know, and we give it a shot because there's no harm in trying. We try it. It doesn't work. Then we know, hey, it doesn't work. We can try something else. But if it works, if there's a good success, then maybe we can stay with it. But, you know, if we give it a shot for a year, give it a shot for one school year or one, one calendar year and say, does it work? Is it going to work for us? I, with my family's business, we've sent people to collections for unpaid balances on clothes, and we've actually had a good return on getting that stuff paid for. The exact amount, I don't know off the top of my head because I don't have all the figures. I didn't know we were going to be talking about this. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, you know you're, even the threat of sending them to collections has gotten a lot of customers to pay. You know? Okay. Jeff? I mean, Thomas made some good points. I, I mean, I've just seen too many people in, in my business alone in collections. It, it, really, it really screws up a person's life. I don't want to be going that far. I understand that we have to take measures. I don't know if that's the measure we want to take. Well, collections is the final step. I've seen, I've seen people's lives ruined because oh. of collections because collection companies are paid and don't resolve getting it removed from their credit for years. No. I've had people, you know, collections, $10, $15.
can't get a mortgage, can't get a, an auto. Can't. Well, this isn't reporting it to a collections a agency. This is using a collections firm. Yeah, right. So that's different. It can still get there, but it is one and the same. That's the problem. It can get to that point. And you don't want to have a situation where someone is, you know, reported to a collection agency where we didn't want to go to that measure and it happened. And now we have to de deal with that mess. Well, the way to get around that, maybe the, uh, I know for us, when we do the collections and stuff, it's our lawyer that does it. Our lawyer is the one that writes the, uh, does all the paperwork, sends uh, the letters, sends all the notices, you know. Well, why don't we talk to the, uh, the school's lawyer, mm -hmm. see if that's something that he's capable of doing, rather than, like he said, because rather than sending it to an agency, you know, if we have the lawyer who's already working for the school, you know, obviously if we do this, he's going to have to get paid to, you know, like we said, the fee. But the lawyer isn't going to be the one reporting stuff to the credit bureau, so it's not going to go against their credit. You know, his job is just the legal aspect of getting us the money that we're owed. It might be, you know, um, it might be worth trying this this next step where we're we're advising people about their ability to participate in, in paid programs or to remain in the programs um, and have me give you an updated report in maybe May or, or to see where we're at because if that in effect narrows it to small numbers mm -hmm. then it may not be necessary and if it doesn't then you may want to reconsider um, you know, we have right now. We've done nothing, so except say, please, right. please pay us, please pay us. So I, I'm thinking maybe by doing this, um, and in the last round of letters we sent out, we just we did put a line in that says, you know, you may continued participation may be impacted, and we did get some immediate calls right after. So it might be something to think about. You know, trying this. Um, and then I can update yeah. you of uh, the status of unpaid balances in May, and then you can revisit that um, if you want to. Do we know how many of the people who owe a balance from kindergarten are right now participating in other paid activities other than, say, the bus fees? Like if they're in band or if they're in... Well, they other. wouldn't be in band because they'd only be in but first But they might grade. have family members oh, in, that's true. in band. I could get you that information. You can see that from the first exhibit that we had um, that was in down. your packet, it went down by 9,000. That was after the last round of letters went out. And that's what an which said, the language. Yes. Okay. Yeah. yeah I, you know, I've heard everybody's comments and, and the idea of a collection. Perhaps we can just write in the policy that we may use that as a tool, mm -hmm. not that we're going to, but possibly use that to clear out the balances at the end of the at the end of the term and have a, a tiered structure where first notice is 30 days or you know the, the language saying this is what's going to happen after 60 days, this is what's going to happen after 90 days. Your kid won't be able to participate, right. and after 120 days, we reserve the right to. Send yeah, it you for can put that in right. the policy. Yeah. So, so someone that you know we've been tracing, you know, because that's yeah. you know that's frustrating for me is that we have 18 people we've been tracing for over a year. Oh, I agree. Yeah. You know, and it's ten thousand dollars, and it's, and it's let's face it, decision. we don't have the money. It's a tough decision <laughs> by all means. Yeah. Yeah. I, I, but I absolutely agree with what he just said. I mean, just to be able to structure it in such a way so that it couldn't be any clearer. This right. is the steps yeah. we're going to take mm -hmm. during this yeah. period. Right. During this period. Yeah. And as much as we don't want to approach the collection idea. You could leave it as a possible. I mean, the right. way the policy is worded is very open. It says possible consequences. Yeah. So you could right. leave it open, as Kelly's suggesting. Right. And then I could present in May, and you could determine at that point what you want to do right. for no, policy. Mean, idea, yeah. I mean, the clarity yeah. of it, is, it right. should be helpful. Yeah, and uh, the other thing, just in addition to Kelly's, you know, just from like what Thomas was saying, with the cost of collections, sure. you know, you know, I would love to see that. You know, if eventually we get to that point, you know, I'm I'm fine with doing it at a phase. You know, let's let's do phase one, and if it's not working, then we can make it put in more teeth. Right. You know, but put it into the contracts now, where people right. are signing. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm I'm signing up for you know for you know pre-K, and I'm going to pay seventy five hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, you know, I don't want the collection agency to take you know. Well, yeah, know, I think we'll get, get the low hanging fruit and take 25%. You know, it's, you know, whereas if they have to, if they have to pay the 25%, then we're not, you know, it's no harm, no foul. If they collect something, great, we get 100% of ours back. If, if they don't, then, you know, so be it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just, I, I think we'll have to revisit that policy for sure. But uh, just a couple passing thoughts is that the, the cost of collection, we can roll that into the penalty. Right. Saying that there's, a, there's an addition to right. that. And, and I would also like to see in there that any balance paid, not paid by the end of the school term is subject to 
collection because I don't think anybody polices that over the summer, right? Um, we continue to send you do, letters you do. out. Okay. Yeah. How many? I'm curious on the process of it. As crazy as it may sound, how many letters do we actually send out? For each balance, many. You, you probably can answer that better. A of, we, we send out a couple of connect ads reminding people. Mm -hmm. right. Then we make phone calls reminding people. And then we send an actual letter. And then we actually send the, the letter. The second letter. The second letter. So on Certified average, mail. say maybe, what, three or four emails and then five letters? <coughs> I'm just no, trying to get an idea. letters, because I think the third letter is usually said certified oh. mail. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Do we know how much... Uh, and unpaid. phone calls in the interims. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So there's probably ten contacts. Do we know how much in unpaid fees we end up writing off? As in, we're not gonna get. This? I mean, this, uh, that's what's on your um, exhibit there. As of last year, there were uh, eleven thousand two hundred forty dollars yeah, worth of. Like at some point, where we just think the school acknowledges this isn't going to get paid, and it's just. I don't know off. if we. Don't because think, so many of these fees that. are new, I I can't speak to I that. I don't think we ever addressed this in the past yeah. either. So that would be a Todd question. Yeah, but ban again, ban still, fees I mean, and bus fees have only been in ninety days. It's written off. I mean, mm -hmm. so it yeah. is a bad debt at that point. But I mean, I don't think we would ever not collect it should someone want to suddenly pay their bus fee from. Last yeah, year. but do we still do we still chase three years later? Is what I think. I would doubt it. Yeah, I think once it's written off as a bad debt, I don't think you actively would work it anymore. I mean, it's just you're going to concentrate on your ongoing ones that aren't in bad debt situation yet so yeah i mean i, I don't think the school has a balance sheet per right. se. We, i mean it's a budget that we're really driving towards so yeah right the one thing you could do is add a contingency for unpaid um, fees in the budget yeah. right luck getting that passed but right <laughs> uh, <laughs> okay all right oh i'm sorry you can't you can't i'm no, sorry um Pre-K and kindergarten votes. Um, exhibit five. We um, we just wanted to kind of put these on right now because enrollment for kindergarten and, and pre-K are up right now. These are not changing from last year. That's good. Um, these are all staying staying flat from last year. But since people are applying, we wanted to be able to give them an actual number, and we can still um, once we finish the budget. Uh, review all the other fees. So kindergarten tuition would be 3,600 for the full day, and then the preschool is three-year-olds 180, uh, four-year-olds 240, three-year-olds 420, four-year-olds 420. Those, those are the extended half days, and the TK program at 720 per month. And these all got cleared by our numbers are fine, okay? Because we had a number we were, we were worried that our, our fees were too high uh, based on the numbers, but they. It, it was an accounting error. We've been at 36 for, this will be the second year we're at 36 yeah. for the yep. kindergarten. Yeah, we're, we're recommending not, 35. Not, okay. yeah, not going up in the kindergarten tuition. We okay. did get some feedback from the Department of Ed that um, when you're applying for the full day tuition, uh, full day kindergarten grant, that they don't want you to carry a large balance in the revolving account so that the tuition should just offset operating costs. Um, there was some question as to whether we had too much money in the account, but the issue was that we have a lot of parents that would prepay their um, deposits for kindergarten prior to the end of the fiscal year. So it looks like there's a balance, whereas really it's money parents are prepaying for their next year's tuition. So these folks in the exhibit four actually helped us out. But yeah. <laughs> right, exactly. exactly. <laughs> but um, so we're okay with that, but I would recommend keeping it where it is and not okay. raising the tuition. Okay. Is there a motion to accept these fees? So moved. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, number five, reserve parking signs. I don't have an exhibit five. There's Not no exhibit. exhibit. Okay. You, you had, exhibit five was what you were just looking oh, at. Oh, that's right. I have that one. Number number five is reserved parking signs. Um, right now, it's my, I, I realize this is my own pet peeve, but I've, I've gotten enough calls from other parents that it's their pet peeve as well. Um, right now, in, in front of Freeman Kennedy, the front row is reserved for visitor parking, and that's currently been, it's you know, no matter what time you get here, it's 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 being taken up by the by the staff um, first thing in the morning. Um, so, you know, parents are you know if they're coming in for lunch duty or having to park all the way over, you know, especially on a rainy and snowy day, they're parking all the way over, um, you know, over by the ball fields and having to 
trudge on over and so there's basically no reserve parking for parents that are coming in to help out um, and so um, you know, you know we, we, we've talked about addressing that but as we were talking about it um, uh, Dr. Alardi said you know it's like it's tough for especially for like Lisa who has to literally run out 50 times during the day and I suggested I'm like well you know I would think that we could have a couple reserves parking spaces for the superintendent and and the principal right up front in addition to the in the parent things because those are the people that are constantly going back and forth between the two schools and up to town hall and things along those lines um, and, I, and I know over at HOD we have the you know the you know the sped director since his, her, her office is over there and then also the principal have a couple of reserve spots over there as well um, so I wanted to see about proposing you know cha you know taking away two of the parent uh, they could even be on the left they could even be not in that front row but uh, you know on the yeah. Well, I, was say, I think I wherever think, I just. I mean, I think I think right now I think there's 11 mm -hmm. parent parking spaces, and I and that seems high. I don't mind taking away, you know, a couple of those for, you know, the principal and the superintendent. You know, I think nine things, and then I guess the other thing is which just kind of address the staff saying, listen, these are reserve spots for for visitors, not for, you know. You know, those aren't staff parking places. I mean, these you know these people are coming in and volunteering during the day. And they shouldn't they shouldn't have to be walking three miles. So, thoughts, uh, conversation. Makes sense. As far as the signs go, I know right now we're working on a tight budget. You know, and as much I do support the idea of them having their own space. Do we know about what the signs cost? Does can the town make oh, the signs? Yeah, DPW. Or? Okay. Yeah, you know, has has them. So. All right. So in that case, it would be it would be nominal. I mean. Yeah. Okay. We have a, we have four prisons in town. I'm sure we can get a sign made. So. <laughs> I thought they made license plates. Yeah, we can get a license plate type sign. <laughs> you can only have seven characters on your sign. <laughs> we'll, we'll get one that says Ingrid. <laughs> okay. Is there a um, motion to put can in the two? Be a motion for that. Yeah, I guess we really don't, I mean, do we? I mean, it's no, no. I mean, I, we can I if you think. want. I just don't know if we actually. Yeah, need I guess one. we don't need one. <laughs> like, no. right, whatever. So, so can we can we get, make that happen, Pam? Awesome. <laughs> Pam does it all. Morning. Exactly. Pam, you right put now. Them up, right. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yes. This weekend. Okay, so that's all I have. So, okay. Dr. Alardi. All right, well, I have quite a few things tonight. So um, per policy, I am asked to give this uh, school committee a quarterly bullying report. So I just need to report to you at this time, um, uh, to this point in the year, we have had one identified and investigated incident of bullying um, at the Freeman Kennedy Upper Elementary School. It was um, investigated by the principal. Appropriate disciplinary action has been taken, um, and they worked with both families in the situation to resolve it. Um, it was not a situation that was turned over to the police, um, and so there was a single incident to date. Okay. Okay. The second um, thing on the agenda is an update on school safety. Um, I wanted to let um, everybody know that we did have an outside uh, consultant, John LaFond, who is a parent of students at both the HOD and at Freeman Kennedy, um, but also has expertise in the school security, um, actually the security field in general, um, has done some work with Virginia Tech um, after the shootings that took place there, and has also worked with the New York City Fire and Police Departments um, in looking at security measures. He volunteered to come do an outside security audit of the schools. Um, we did have both of them scheduled for last week. He came on Tuesday um, and did a walkthrough with uh, Lisa Altham. He actually, no, she was um, unable to. She was at six. So he walked through the building with myself, with um, Chief Stone and Officer Glenn Eichel. Uh, Mark joined us as well. And he gave us some feedback and some recommendations for things that we might want to consider um, discussing for the Freeman Kennedy. We were scheduled to look at the HOD on Friday, but due to the storm, uh, we are rescheduling that and hope to do that sometime this week, um, but possibly the week after vacation. It's contingent on his travel schedule. Um, I think the specific recommendations for improvement would be really best discussed as a matter of executive session. Um, there, there might be some things that we can share out with the public um, once we make decisions. Um, some of them are really internal security measures that um, should be kept confidential uh, to protect the safety of the students. Um, 
so that's where we are in that process. Um, he is going to put together a report to bring to the committee so that you can see what the recommendations are for both sites, um, and we will, you know, move forward from there. I did take some notes, so if you guys want to see what I wrote down, if you can read my hieroglyphics, uh, my chicken scratch, then I'm more than welcome. I'm more than happy to share what I wrote down with you guys. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And obviously, we will do that. Have his report in executive yes. session because we don't want to lay out on the camera everything that we're doing for security for the schools. So. Right. Uh, but obviously anything that is um, general information we'll share out with the public in a report in March. All right. Um, the third thing on the agenda is that um, at the beginning of the school year, uh, actually it was when I first came on in July, um, the committee graciously agreed to allow me to delay d establishing district-wide goals for the first part of the year so that I could really spend some time learning much more about the system, getting a better feel for what the strengths and weaknesses and what our challenges are, where we had opportunities for growth. Um, and tonight I wanted to share back with you the results of that entry report and the findings. Um, for anybody in the audience, there is copies of the PowerPoint, so if you need them. So let's see if I can make our technology work. <laughs> Maybe not. So, um, as part of the entry process, I just wanted to give you a sense of where I collected the data from. Um, it began in September and October with really extensive interviews. Uh, some of the questions that I asked during the interview process are really what are the strengths of the district, what do you think should be preserved and protected at all costs, what are some challenges, what are some opportunities. I met with all the um, town department heads. So the town manager, um, the um, director of the library, uh, I met with the chief, and, um, uh, the fire chief and the police chief, um, and a variety of other people. Uh, individual interviews with all the school committee members, administrators. I had individual interviews with parents as well as focus group interviews. Um, met with teachers, community members, members, um, senior citizens, assistant teachers, food service, custodial staff. Uh, so the interview data was the first part. Um, the second was document review. So I looked at the MCAS achievement uh, data over time. We looked at the budget history over the last um, five to eight years, teacher and administrative evaluations. We did have several outside audits of the district. We had a mid-cycle review, which looks at the special education programming that was conducted by DESE, um, as well as an outside audit um, from the Futures Cor Health Corporation uh, that looked at special ed programming. Um, I've reviewed past school improvement plans demographic data for the district and um, contracts. Um, in order to make the bulk of information that I collected manageable and useful for the committee as well as the district, I did organize it into the four categories. These four categories are um, the same that the, uh, the model system for superintendent evaluation as well as teacher evaluation um, that was put out by the Department of Ed. So instructional leadership, management and operations, family and, family and community engagement, and professional culture. Um, under each of these, what I've done is give you some general theme statements. So I tried to take all of that data and look at what are some of the patterns. So I'll give you a general theme and then list some of the strengths and some opportunities that we have. Um, at this point, this, the data is reported just as sort of a state of the state. What, where are we currently? I'm not making recommendations at this point of what we should be um, you know, focusing on or how we're going to shape the goals. That'll be the next step. So this is just a state of the state of what we have currently. Okay, and instructional leadership. Um, educational leaders, this is the theme, in the district work hard and are passionate about the work they do. Um, the administrative team is supportive of each other and willing to work together, but they haven't had the opportunity, particularly in the last three to five years, to collaborate around key educational issues and really develop a strong sense of teamwork across district um, and a shared sense of purpose. Some of the strengths are that there, there are positive working relationships among the administrative team. There is a clear focus on student learning and achievement, and we have a very efficient use of central office staff. The central office staffing here is more limited than in many other districts, but you have people that are cross-trained that fill multiple roles. There's a lot of flexibility in there. Uh, we have a business consultant that's part-time um, who works with our business, business um, ad administrative assistant, and, and so it's a very efficient use of the limited resource we have. 
challenges and opportunities. Currently, the district does not have clearly articulated goals um, or a current strategic plan. There was a strategic planning process started a couple of years ago, but it was not um, seen through to fruition. There has been a large turnover in key leadership positions, which means that some of the procedural things and some of the initiatives have not um, been completed. Um, and there has been a lack of professional development provided by the district for administrators and leadership roles. Um, other than what people have pursued independently, there hasn't been um, focused professional de development efforts there. Ingrid, was the plan vetted and was that usable at all? Or? <clears throat> the plan, pieces of it, they got to the point of writing the vision, uh, the mission statement, a proposed vision that was not completed and approved. Um, a lot of the work in the strategic plan is similar to what the entry findings, they were really looking at what are the strengths and weaknesses, oh, okay. but some of those things have changed. So I think this is more current. So okay. pieces of the data are usable. The mission statement's been adopted, but no, there hasn't been. Okay. The rest hasn't okay. been developed. Okay. Okay, another thing within go um, governance, um, the, another theme, there's an atmosphere of guarded optimism in the district. Um, members of the school community are invested in having a voice and helping shape the direction the school system takes. However, over the past few years, not all st stakeholders felt valued, um, and there's an interest in changing that culture. So that universally came from both parent um, perspective as well as um, interviews with teachers and administrators. Strengths, there is strong communication from the schools to the community. Parents reported this as a strength. The newsletters, blogs, Connect Ed, there's a lot of information that goes out. Um, there is a positive collaborative relationship between the NTA, Norfolk Teachers Association, and the administration. Um, and we were successful in negotiating the new teacher evaluation process. That's really a tribute to the NTA um, and to the work that's been done. We were one of the first districts that had a ratified signed agreement. We've moved forward with that in a really positive direction. So that's definitely a strength. Um, challenges, the district budget for professional development has been decreased by $30,000 over the last five years. We do not, as a district, provide professional development for paraprofessional staff. So all of our teacher assistants, um, they do not work um, per contract on the professional development days. So they're not able to participate in the Go Mass training or any other things that we're running. Uh, that's a really critical issue because those are the people that are pr um, providing instructional support to some of our most at-risk learners, um, and they don't have that opportunity. And then we have a lack of avenues for two-way communication. So while the schools are really strong at sending out information, we don't have really good forums in place for parents to, to contribute their input, to share feedback on what's working and what's not working well. Um, so we don't have a good way of collecting perspective data um, at the current time. Another thing, uh, as far as governance, school committee members take their role seriously and are committed to developing and supporting an outstanding educational program for all children. Um, keeping the committee better informed of curriculum and instructional needs as well as achievement results um, is critical to allowing um, them to govern effectively moving forward. Some of the strengths, all members of the school committee have completed the uh, state charting the course training. Three members of the committee have served in the roles for multiple years and school committee's meetings overall run smoothly and policies are kept up to date. Um, another uh, challenges and opportunities. There is an opportunity for us to increase the focus on curriculum and instruction during school committee meetings and that's another avenue to get information out to the community because they're televised and it gets um, data out, you know, another way to get information out. Um, in your packets with a full entry report, there's a lot more detail to all these data points. I'm just trying to highlight the key things. All right, standards and curriculum. Um, theme statement. The district does not have a tightly defined written curriculum that ensures consistency within the instructional program for all students. While teachers all follow the state frameworks and standards and share common teaching practices, there is considerable variation within the instructional core. Uh, some strengths with curriculum instruction, we did uh, have the addition of half-time curriculum directors who are working towards developing that written curriculum. We have published learning expectation documents for all content areas, K to six. Uh, we've had a lot of strong training and um, skill development in literacy instruction for our staff. Uh, the adoption of the Go Math program is really ahead of the curve. It's fully aligned with the Common Core Standards and a rigorous program. School committee adopted a formal curriculum review cycle back in October, so we have a plan moving forward for looking at each content area annually. 
and we have rich technology resources. Uh, some challenges. Report card revision is desperately needed. Um, the last report card revision, there was a process started three years ago to take a look at that, but the report cards were never revised. So the last revision was 20, over 20 years ago. So the report cards do not reflect the current common um, core learning standards. We also have the opportunity in that report card revision to uh, develop report cards that are electronic so that parents might have more continued access to information about their students' progress. Um, we have to develop clear proficiency be benchmarks and expectations by grade level and content area. So once the curriculum is, is well in place, we need to know what does a proficient reader at grade one look like mid in January? What are our expectations going forward? Uh, there's an opportunity to increase the volume of nonfiction writing required of students um, and to revisit and reevaluate the district's written language curriculum. Student achievement. The district does have high expectations for most students um, and a culture of strong academic achievement as well as a commitment to educating the whole child. Some of the strengths are students perform well on the MCAS. We're in the top 90% of school districts serving a similar age range of children. We're consistently above the state average on MCAS. We have a strong award-winning band program and a very well-developed social-emotional learning curriculum. Some challenges. Um, student scores on the open response items, and we've talked about this at committee meetings before, those are the open-ended written response, are a relative area of weakness for the district. We do have an achievement gap between special education and the aggregate student population, ranges from 27 to 42 percent, and that's over um, all four grade levels tested and, and different subject areas, both ELA, math, and science. Um, there's definitely an opportunity for the district to review the rigor of some of our remedial instructional programs um, and to, to look at how well those are aligned with the Common Core standards. Instruction. The teaching staff in Norfolk is highly committed and a dedicated group of professionals who take great pride in the school community and positive working relationships among um, staff are valued. Strengths, we have a very experienced teaching staff. We have very low turnover. Um, I think in the general ed um, program, uh, it's in your report, but I'm pretty sure that uh, the average um, number of years of experience is 10. Um, for special education, it's five. So it's a veteran teaching staff. Parents report pretty universally in the interviews that I did that the quality of teaching and relationships with teachers is a big area of strength. The district has been able to maintain in tight budget times small class sizes. We do have, which is very rare in this area, full-time building substitutes who are certified licensed teachers and knowledgeable about our local curriculum who can cover classrooms um, when needed. And we do have clear rules and expectations for student conduct. Some challenging challenges. Um, our, mentor, our district mentoring program, which is a program of providing support for, for new teachers in their first couple of years of practice, could definitely be strengthened. One of the challenges is we don't have a lot of new hires. Um, there's not a lot of turnover, so you have one or two teachers. There is a potential to partner with other area districts, with Rentham and Plainville, to be able to provide a more intensive course um, of support and study for, for new teachers. Um, we do have a, dis a district-wide need for additional professional development and differentiating instruction, and that's to meet the range of needs of learners in the classroom. We do, and this is again universally reported by both parents and teachers, the district has a lack of resources currently for enrichment and challenge outside the general education curriculum. So to provide extension learning opportunities for kids that come in um, who have a, a strong skill set within the grade level um, and are ready to take on more, more challenging work. Um, we do, through the new teacher evaluation tool, have an opportunity to be able to provide more effective feedback and support to educators. That's an opportunity. Special Education Department provides individual instruction and services to students that meet their needs. Um, at the same time, the alignment between the remedial programs and the general education curriculum is inconsistent. So there is some gaps there between those two. 
parents report um, confidence in the quality and volume of services provided to students, and the district has developed recently some very strong specialized programs that allow us to provide services to students with significant needs within the district. So there is a budget impact there. We have a new program in the preschool that's uh, really designed to meet the needs of students on the autism spectrum, provide more intensive speech and language services and programming. We have the best in the SEALS program, um, which provide therapeutic support to students who have social emotional learning needs um, who, or who may be on the autism spectrum at the older grade levels. Again, we have an experienced special education teaching staff. Um, over the past five years, we've significantly reduced the number of students identified um, as requiring special education services. It went from about 21% five years ago down to much more co um, comparable with state averages, about 16%. Um, we do have a very strong social thinking curriculum, which is um, a lot of districts are in the process of looking at, but that's really a program designed to teach social skills um, to students that have a disability in that area. And we also have rich resources for assistive technology. Challenges and opportunities. We have an opportunity to start sharing the supervision and evaluation responsibilities um, between regular and special education. Currently, the special education director does all the supervision and evaluation for special education staff. The building principals do all the supervision and evaluation for regular education. So bringing those two things together will allow people to get much richer feedback from multiple sources and lenses. Um, continuing to develop the strong internal programs to meet the special ne specialized needs of students. Um, allows one for students to remain in their home district as long as possible and it also has a budgetary impact of us not needing to send students out and being able to provide appropriate programming internally. Um, another area that we need to look at is developing guidelines and practices for determining when a student requires additional adult assistance from a paraprofessional as well as determining when the child's made sufficient progress so that that's no longer needed. So that's a budget um, piece as well. Management and operations. Um, residents of Norfolk, of Norfolk get a good return on their financial investment in the schools. The district has a moderate per pupil spending rate compared to other comparable districts, uh, yet produces higher student achievement results. That data is in your packet as well, so that you can look at how our per pupil spending compares to other area districts as well as the achievement results. Um, again, strengths moderate per pupil, lower than state average. Facilities are uh, in great condition. Freeman Kennedy's in great condition. Uh, HOD is in good condition. There's some things that we're going to need to address over the next few years in terms of from a facility side there. Um, we had the advantage for a one-time technology purchase through the building project, so uh, that should have a very positive budget impact. We're not going to be replacing computers, technology at the Freeman Kennedy for the next five years, uh, most likely. And with the new building, we have energy efficient heating and water systems, which should reduce some of our um, maintenance and annual costs. Um, some opportunities. Freeman Kennedy currently does have some unused classroom space. There's a potential to rent that out to, we've, we've talked to some local universities like Leslie that have off-site graduate programs. Um, so there's a potential revenue there as well as to collaborative placements like um, BICO or um, the Reeds Collaborative. Um, there is an opportunity for us to create more transparency in the budget process. That came through in a, a lot of the interviews with other community town departments um, as well as the senior center who want um, more outreach and a better, better sense of where the schools are allocating funds and what the school's needs are. Uh, another theme, fiscal resources in Norfolk are tight and the district does have a limited capacity to absorb additional budget cuts without compromising the quality of education. There's information in your packet. The, um, you know, the budget over the last several years has remained flat or been decreased, um, so, so it's tight. Strengths, the SAC program is financially self-sufficient and a great resource well utilized by the community. Um, and we do have strong working relationships with the town that has allowed us to offset some costs. So through sharing resources, we have a shared technology director, there's a, an energy agreement here um, currently, so that's a strength. Challenges, declining enrollment. Over the past four years, we've lost 145 students. Um, the overall district budget has remained flat or decreased over the past five years, which has resulted in position and program cuts. So foreign language program, health wellness program, um, and many classroom positions. Town does not have a commercial tax base to help, uh, to help offset some of those budgetary constraints. 
Um, our food service program is operating at a deficit. We're subsidizing that by about thirty to forty thousand dollars annually. Um, and we had to we got to a position where we had to add fees for band and bus to continue to run those. Family and community engagement. Families and community members take great pride in the school system and the small town personalized educational experience they perceive the town offers. Some strengths, we have the Nest um, group that does a lot of fundraising, um, about $6,000 last year and awards grants to teachers to fund special projects. We have partnerships with the Recreation Department. Through, through the Rec Department this year, we're offering a bunch of after school programs. We have the Stock Market Exchange, a foreign language program, um, school councils that are actively involved. The Parent Advisory Council for Special Ed is growing with increased membership. We started this year a parent leadership group, which will meet monthly. That's another way to try to collect that um, two -way, that two way communication so that we can collect feedback and, and hear parents' voices about concerns in the schools. Districts provided a variety of parent seminars, open circle, anti-bullying, um, and has strong art and music programs that the community attends. Challenges, increasing participation in NEST um, is, is, it has been a challenge, um, but if we can get people more actively involved, that could be a, an additional revenue source. Um, there's a need to create more opportunities for parent involvement at the Freeman Kennedy and for parents to feel welcome and part of that community. Um, Reactivating participation in the senior tax credit program is another thing that we're looking at. We do have, we started that this year, we do have a number of senior volunteers that are providing support, um, clerical, um, tutoring support, things like that at the schools. And the possibility of partnering with Rentham and Plain, Plainville to increase programming for both parents and students outside the school day. And the last is professional culture. Um, professional growth and learning are valued by individuals within the district. But the district has not made the development of a strong professional culture where all members of the community regularly engage in learning, collaborative inquiry, and innovation a high priority over the last three to five years. Strengths, we have LSDO and um, CESPA that offer on-site professional development at low cost. We have several student teachers from local universities, which is a great learning opportunity for both the student teachers as well as for the mentor staff. Um, and again, we have a positive collaborative relationship with the NTA. Challenges, we have limited time in the current calendar for professional development for teachers. There's limited time for collaboration and co-planning. There has been a lack of professional development for administrators, um, and there's been a lack of differentiation in professional development offerings. So we're not tiering our offerings to meet the range of needs of teachers. So next steps, um, all of the data that's in your packet will be, I'll be taking back to the district leadership team. We will be further analyzing all of the findings and identifying some priority areas of focus for improvement. Um, with, as part of that, we'll do a root cause analysis. So we're gonna try to dig deeper um, in some of our, for example, if we wanna look at the special education achievement gap, we're gonna try to figure out what are the root causes of the, that gap so that we can um, inform our strategy. We'll be proposing district improvement goals to the school committee, and once you adopt those, we can move forward with developing a strategic action plan to address the most critical areas of need. Okay. And then finally, the goal of all of the work is to help the Norfolk schools realize their mission, and again, as Sean read it at the beginning of the meeting, offering a safe, joyful, and challenging learning environment that meets the needs of, the, of our diverse students. Through school, family, and community partnerships, we provide an education that inspires lifelong learners, and cultivates caring and productive citizens of the ever-changing world. All right. So I can take any questions. I just got a couple of things. Sure. Uh, as far as the data collection from the parents, mm -hmm. uh, I'm sure we could update the uh, school's website so that they can actually send uh, questions yep. or stuff. And uh, it can be forwarded not only to you, but maybe even if it's something that could uh, that we have to address as the committee, it can be forwarded to us as well. Uh, also, uh, you know, social media is a big thing right now. You know, that's another idea. Or also, I want to encourage all parents. You know, you can to come to the school committee meetings. Mm -hmm. You know, you can address us at the meetings. And we can bring up these topics and we can try to do what we can, mm -hmm. you know. Um, also, as for the report cards, 
who is responsible for revising the report cards? Is that something that? That would be a committee that we would put together um, of representatives from the grade level to take a look at the Common Core standards okay, so, and make those recommendations. So that's something on, mm -hmm. on you, the principal, and the yep. teachers, right? Mm -hmm. All right. Um, we might want to collaborate with Keith Phillip on the already of the existing system to use. Mm -hmm. They do. And was, uh, yeah, I think that's all I've got. Okay. okay. Any other questions? That was easy, huh? All right. <laughs> and there is, a, like I said, there's a lot more of the backup data in the full report. Just on the website? It's not yet. I wanted to present be. it to you, but I can certainly put okay. it up on the yeah, website once you've had nice. a chance. Everybody has a chance to sure. meet through this a greater length, so that's good. Yep. Uh, com committee reports. All right, Nest, um, as Dr. Olardi said, uh, we're still looking for members. Um, we actually had to postpone our last meeting because of a snowstorm, so therefore that's, that's got bumped, so I have nothing new to report. Uh, Kelly, budget? Uh, I really didn't prepare anything today. I know that Two. Dr. Alardi put together a, a fairly firm level services budget that we'll review after the meeting tonight and then discuss next steps on how we approach the town um, with that budget. Right, and next, and next month's the public budget hearing, right? Hopefully, yeah, we're oh. gonna set time, we're gonna finalize the timelines at the subcommittee tonight, right. but last year it was done um, in March. In March. So, okay. so hopefully, yeah, that's that's what I think we had an original agenda. So that way, that that is a time when, for those of you out in the out in the public, can you know ask back and forth questions because it's more of a hearing as opposed to a meeting. So, um, King Philip, our last meeting consisted of a superintendent's proposed operating budget presentation. Uh, the meeting before that, we actually heard from the technology director as well as to things that were being proposed. There were a lot of things that they want to implement, which I think are probably necessary at the time. If anyone's interested in having any reports, I'd be happy to provide okay. it to you as well. Um, also, last night I attended Rentham Town Government Study Committee, which was uh, organized about six months ago. It's essentially it's a way of overseeing what's happening in the town to find out if there's a better way of doing it. Okay. Any, any movement on the um, union negotiation at KP? Involved. Have they met? Have they met yet? It's been going back and forth. Right now, one of the proposals we're having is um, they're having a meeting tonight, which I unfortunately wasn't able to attend, but it essentially has to do with um, putting the union in a position to understand that we, uh, we have to implement the health insurance for cost savings. Right. Um, and it's, it's, we've gone several plus months with them not making a decision, and essentially putting us in a position to make the decision for them. And for us to do that, we have to actually implement the statute, which in that case would then force them to choose a decision. So now I know they publicly said that they, in order to level service, they need like 3.3 .3 million. Mm -hmm. How is that number that far out of whack? I mean, that's that's like a 10% increase to stay level. I mean, they're, 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 teacher's contract's not going up by 10%. They're, you know, all the other, I mean, all of our costs are going up two and a half to 3%. I don't know, understand how their costs are all going up additional seven percent yeah know. yeah an additional seven percent I mean it's not Rentham's not that different than yeah. <laughs> I mean we're trying to compile information from the yeah. separate towns as well to try and give them a better understanding of where we're right. coming from and it's just not moving is it gamesmanship or is it I know in the past that um, they they used uh, seven hundred thousand from yeah their E and D funds to to supplement the budget to keep positions and I know those funds are not available this year so they've lost seven hundred thousand. Essentially, we've had money we've had to draw from those specific yep. accounts that are typically used for other things. Yep. We haven't had a choice but to draw from. Them. They had to use, I believe, the E and D funds for um, septic work last year. So that that isn't a fund that they can. So they've lost that in addition to um, some other funding sources. Because they had a brand new septic system that they didn't have bonded. I'm, I'm not sure about that, but I just know that the E and D funds are no longer available. We're also in the process of um, Unit C, which is secretaries. So we're negotiating that as well as uh, finishing negotiations for the superintendent. Okay. But the, but have, has has the teachers union sat down with the the union t the the team yet? We've sat down with them a couple times. Oh okay. Yeah, I think last month there hadn't even been a sit down. Am I correct? Right. I remember that? Right. It's uh, it's not moved as expeditiously as we wanted to. Okay. Okay. Hopefully we'll have something new and improved next time. All right. Well, you, while while we're on you, 
We'll change your name from King Philip to Technology Subcommittee. Um, we, like, we had our first meeting, which essentially just set up the ground rules, okay. which is great, and you know, put into play what our mission is going to be. Okay. Our next meeting is going to be on Thursday. Okay. Mark Policy Subcommittee. We have three readings. We have three readings. Also, we had pretty much finished the Corey policy, but then the state decided that they were going to throw us a curveball and change their Corey policy. Right. Yeah. And so now we have to redo the Corey policy. Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> nothing like doing pain. a whole bunch of work to do a whole bunch of work. Um, so the first one, we have a first reading on the community use of school facility and resources. I can speak to that one a little bit. Um, and I don't know, is it possible to waive three we readings on this by vote? Is that? Excuse me? Okay. It's possible to waive doing three readings on this policy. Well, this is the third this policy is, anyways, right? This is the first, um, oh, first reading, reading on the okay. community use. What's changed in this is really just the liability oh, statement. Okay. And I had our attorney t take a look at the um, the re release of responsibility um, for school, for renting out the building. The form that you're currently using, if an outside agency, say Boy Scouts or, or um, the basketball wants to rent the building, they have a liability statement that somebody signs with the rental saying that they, they basically hold the school harmless. Problem is, the way the current form is structured, they're signing as an individual and not as a representative of that group. So you're only releasing liability for the one person who signed. Everybody else attending that event they is not covered by that. Right. 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 So the attorneys are recommending that we change that language and that um, basically um, that they, they have to sign, that they're authorized to sign for that group and that they're taking responsibility for that organization using the space. So he, the only things that are changed on this is the language for the school use release. Um, and then he's also recommending, um, and you can see that in the strikeouts, um, that we add a parent permission acknowledgement form that goes home. So if KP Basketball wants to rent the space, that group should be sending home a permission slip letting parents know that it's not a school sponsored or school supervised activity. Um, so just to make sure that they're aware that um, you know, because it's housed here, we're not responsible for supervising the behavior of students or, or the events that take place. It's the responsibility of the agency renting the building. And in yeah. the case if someone gets hurt, it's not coming back on us, it's gonna go to the people running the event. Mm -hmm. Yeah, as I was so, gonna say, I, I would say this is a, this is an incidental change. This isn't a change of the policy. It's just change of the language of the thing. So I think we can waive the third reading. See, you know, second and third reading. Um, is there a motion to accept uh, file KF as amended, February six, two thousand thirteen? So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Kelly. Aye. Yes. And the second one is going to be a second reading on distribution posting, distribution and posting of pro promotional materials on school grounds. Uh, I guess we heard back from the lawyer who said that because we're a school, we don't have if we don't have to let people do it, uh, po uh, post signs or whatever. But if we allow one person, it's going to kind of open the door to others. So that's why we're going to the school partners, uh, go the route of only allowing the school partners to have that ability. And basically what he recommended here, in the, in the first reading we had a statement that says, while not explicitly prohibited, um, that we'd take necessary measures to make sure any of the following events on school property don't interfere with the educational process. And it was holding signs, demonstrating protests, distributing information, leafleting. What he said is as a school, we, we have the right to restrict that even further and not allow it at all. And he said you're better off to not create an open forum and to restrict it where you can. Okay. So they, he suggested striking all of that and just saying it's expressly prohibited and that we'd only allow school partners to post their information. Sounds good. Yeah, I was gonna say, and I liked how he put the uh, election law portion yeah. in there, because that. Because we are an election site, site so we right. have to follow the law there. Right. Yeah. Okay. okay. Any any further questions on that? Okay. And so we uh, then we have a third reading. Yeah, yep. we have a third reading. And this is the cost that we gave the information for you earlier on. Okay. So what we want to do is change this to May. We want to we want to firm this up a little bit, right? 
We put the language in there. Yeah, so it's 60-day delinquent. 60-day delinquent termination or denial of participation of activities. Mm -hmm. So that's after 60 days. Yep. And then we added the statement at our last reading um, that they would not be eligible to enroll in tuition-based programs the following year. The only question is the uh, idea of col uh, collections. If you know, if we put that in, we're going to have to revise this one more time and then do a new reading. How did, how did you phrase it, Kelly? That yeah, after after ninety days. School may reserve the right re to reserves the right to forward this right. to a collection agency. Right, yeah. and that could go under um, possible penalties, permissible penalties yep. for non-payment. We could yep. add a, a final bullet that just says school reserves the right um, mm -hmm. to refer unpaid balances at the end of the year to collection agency, or you could say it comes to the school committee for a vote or. Yeah, because so that kind of goes back to initial concern with I don't like the collections idea. I mean, if we yeah. put that language in there, who then has the authority then opt to pursue that? Because I don't, as I said, I don't, still don't particularly care for it, but I, I do understand the, right. that option needs to be there at some point. Mm -hmm. I think there needs to be some sort of check and balance to it though. Yeah, oh, absolutely. So All right, you so could say with the approval of the school, school committee, committee, the yeah. district reserves the right to refer unpaid balances to a collection agency? Uh, yeah, yeah. I think that's yeah. Okay. Right. okay. I like that. So, um, that. do we also want to phrase in there um, the ability to extend financial um, penalties? I think that should be already be in there. I think we put that in. Oh, we did. Okay. Yeah. It's uh, additional penalty. Okay. Yeah. Late, late fee may be assessed. Yeah, late fee may be assessed. That's already in there. Uh, where is it? So we want to be a little more prescriptive than that, just because it's not just late fees. I mean, if we do send it to some form of collection agency, right. it's going to be a lot more late fees. But, yeah. well, plus, also, the forms that folks signed this year don't mention the collections thing. Right. right. So I don't think you can even get into that. No, until I think sure. in, until we add it in. Yeah. You it, needs to be, it needs to be in the contract. Yeah. And we'll then you're going to have to... Well, no, we do that can be an incidental change if, we're, if, if we change our formula to say that, you know, you know, you know, since we're putting in that can be sent to collections, mm -hmm. if the contract that they're signing says that they're responsible for any collection fees, then I would say that, that you could make that as an incidental change, you know, you know with a vote. Separately. Down Separately the down the line. Like in the summer when you're getting ready to send out the right. things. So that, uh, yeah, that's fine. Because right. you're also going to have to, if you have the collections language in there, that's going to have to be specifically spelled out, going to your point of day to have to pay the fees, right. and that's right. going to have to be right. completely spelled out. Right. So this yeah. Yeah, actually may end up being more than incidental, because that's going to be pretty and substantial. Well, we can do, but, that, but that could just be on the contracts, not necessarily in our policy. We want to add that. The policy will... I think the policy. Yeah, yeah. No, but we, we could put it in the policies, you know. Well, this is going to go to the, the lawyers and see you know, how they need us to have it. Sure. Written to yeah, I mean, I guess we can cross that. CYA, yeah, 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 I mean. So do you want to just put off this reading on this one then? No, I think, I think, that, I, think, I think this is fine in there now because, and I, and I think the fine. after 90 days may be able to send to collections. Just being able to add that into the letter, I think you is going to. You want to be at the, after 90 days or at the conclusion of the school year? Any unpaid balance. I would balance. say the we, school committee with, with approval of the school committee would reserve the right to refer on unpaid after, balances. After 90 days, it, it's, it opens the door after 90 days to it. When we actually do end up going that route, it's subject to uh, a vote at the school committee level. I yeah. still don't think you can do it this year, though. No. No, we, we couldn't charge. So we could, saying, I, I, if we I send someone say, to collections now, we would have to eat the collection right. fee. So we'd want to say, but it, it, even beyond it, that, I don't know. Uh, we're saying even if the policy is passed, that it's with the approval of school committee. So I would assume you wouldn't it's approve it. Sign a contract. It. You can send some anyone to collections. I mean, I mean, technically, uh, you, you, you know, I don't think we have we enough time. We have no, hard enough time correcting or uh, collecting on rental contracts with folks, and those are reviewed 22 days of Tuesday. But right. um, but as far as enforcing that this year, if the policy is adopted, you've still left in the language with the approval of the committee. So you wouldn't have to approve that that course of action this year. Yeah. The question I have, if that comes up for a vote, is that going to be something that just has to pass with a majority or with a unanimous? No, just no, a majority. majority. Okay. So, 
No, but I, don't, I was going to say, but I, you know, like, but I, I agree with you, Thomas, from the standpoint of I think right. until we put that in language in the contract, I wouldn't do it this year, anyways. Right. Okay. But you know, but, yeah, that's I, my but, large but I don't want to yeah. set us up for a, right. a whole separate yeah. Yeah. argument that we don't but, have to get into. But we can put it in the, in the letter saying that you know yeah. we have we have the right to turn you over to collections. I mean, yeah. Because it may yield results. Right. And that's right. So I, I for, don't know if, if anyone that was a, we'll be getting that letter is watching, ignore that part. <laughs> <laughs> did, did we want to finalize the language on that? Is yeah, it after I think ninety days. Or yeah, I think that's. The, the I like three ninety months? days. I you mean, that would give us yeah. the flexibility. Do you want me to have Pam read back what she's got? After ninety days, the school committee reserves the right to submit the unpaid balance to collection to a collection agency. Yeah, I think that. Uh, or do you want to write after ninety days? The school committee. Where, I'm sorry. Where I are we? Really <laughs> um, after it's 90 days, is, with the approval of the school committee, okay. the district, the district, the reserves, district reserves, reserves the, the right, right to yeah. refer unpaid yeah. balances to a collection. Right. But I, I do. We won't be reserve. We won't right. be signing them. I do concur with all the other uh, sentiments because I, <laughs> I would like to do it in a way that it doesn't actually affect their credit unless you know we have you know that's why I'd like to see if the lawyer can handle the collection stuff rather than going to an actual collections agency well that because uh, I don't think the that they will do that they actually do something whereas the collections agency they're not actually being paid unless they collect and then that right. person is paying that fee whereas right. a lawyer but is going to pay for every time he calls and picks a phone that's point well, ten. And, 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 and there's there's plenty of collection agencies out there that do not report to collect okay. I mean, you, you can determine yeah, you, you can know. set it up however you want. You okay. can, you know, I mean, you can stop it where they don't yeah. have a small claims. Yeah. You can, you all can, right. there's levels of it. I talk to a law firm and that's all they do yep. is collections. Yeah. And they say, you know, look, this is what we do. It's up to you whether you want them also hit on their credit report. He goes, a lot of people that we work with don't even do it because that's just a whole nother level of legal yeah. nightmare. Do we want to finish the rest of that with any additional language relative to additional costs? Leave that the way the I do think, on. yeah, it should be in there that uh, the that the person will be responsible for any costs incurred to collect this, this such debt. Yeah. Well, I think that goes into the next year part, though. Right, changing the contract that right. they're signing. Yeah, because I think so we need to change it. it at that point. I think right. we'll have to have our lawyer, presumably. Right, but that can right. go into the policy then. And so that when we do implement that in the contract, it's already there. But we can't put it in the policy now because we don't have oh, that language contract. in the contract. Yeah, you okay. have to do one. So we, I think we have to do the contract first. And then you have okay. to make an incidental change. Yeah, and then we can do an incidental change. I don't think that would be a... Yeah. Okay. The contract is supporting the that makes Right. Sense. Okay. Okay. Uh, any, other oh, is it, uh, any other discussion? Was this a That's a motion? third reading. This so. is a third reading. So is there a motion to accept... Exhibit 9, file JQ, student cost fees, funds, tuition, and charges as amended on today. So moved. So moved. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. All right. All right. Moving right along. New business. Uh, renewal application for... School partner, Norfolk Rec, Exhibit 10. Oh, it's on. Nope. Nope, that's not oh, that one. Oh, that's the school partners in here, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Pam, it's confusing me. Yeah. No, I got it. Okay, uh, this is for Norfolk Rec. Pretty self-explanatory. She just listed all the things that they're, per they're currently doing uh, based on our policies. She apologized for her poor penmanship, but we evidently do not have a, uh, a uh, printable PDF version online. She typed it all in, did the whole thing. Who creates this from? Is there something that we could have them go back in and make some type of PDF version? Well, I think we need to change, we need to change the form anyways from yeah. the standpoint of this isn't really a renewal application, this is an initial application, but yeah, um, I talked to Adam about it and having it being more checkbox, you know, m much more interactive where you can, you know, you know, this is how I fit, this is why I fit, you know, okay. so a, a lot of drop downs and things like that to eliminate the, like the right. And I already talked to Adam about that and so he said he could definitely do a uh, do Google form and set it up that way, so. Okay. Cool. See, look, look at me being technological. <laughs> <laughs> I'm learning. So proud of you, I'm Sean. Like, I love it. Okay. Do, do, do. Um, any other? I have a couple new business items. Do we want to vote on that? Oh, oh, is, oh, is there a motion to accept Norfolk Recreation? So moved. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, Jen LaFon, um, just kind of last minute, wanted to make sure. Um, she's doing a, it, it's, it's on your, it was an ancillary that we just put in. Uh, Jen LaFon, um, who is a resident in town, actually John LaFon's wife, um, is doing miles for melanoma. She's been doing a charity run walk on the uh, same course as the Jingle Bell Run. And she, which so it you know starts and ends at HOD. And she just wanted to um, make sure that she could start and begin the. When is this? Um, it's it's in uh, May twentieth, May twentieth, May twenty first, somewhere around there. Okay. Um, and um, she she did tell me that, so luckily I remember that part. Um, there won't be any raffles on site. You know, there's and she said she'll clean up everything. It's eleven to one. Um, nothing inside the school. Um, and it's, I think it's just very nice for her to ask from the standpoint of usually we're not asked anyways. <laughs> it just happens. Hey, we were uh, so I want to make sure uh, everyone okay with this? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Um, and then the other thing I had more for um, just kind of uh, some housekeeping things, probably more for you, Ingrid. I know there's some new leaks at Freeman. Mm -hmm. um, what's being done as far as reporting and or repair? We are working with um, uh, everything now. Any issues are being that Toby identifies are being CC'd directly to Fontaine and to Greg Cohen. Okay. Um, Fontaine is um, responsible for coming on site and repairing things. Okay. Um, but we're, we've closed the loop so that everybody's notified instead of just one okay. or the other. Okay. Um, I got a, call, a couple calls from a few people over the past month saying that it appears that the lights are on basically 24 7. People are driving by. Some of the neighbors have complained that the lights on in the school, there's just a ton of lights on. Um, I haven't heard that, but I'll look um, into it. Uh, let's see. Is the heating system, I've gotten conflicting reports, is it 100%? It was, we had some issues with the gym and the media center. They have come out and there were some issues on uh, some of the rooftop units that were missing parts that needed to be replaced. But my understanding is now that it is, is pretty um, consistent temperature wise throughout the building. Okay. And how's your office, noise wise? <laughs> it's back to being pretty loud. Okay, so is the heating system not 100%? <laughs> well, the heating system's working. It's the vibration of the rooftop units that they've put over the office, which yep. actually is tied to the freezer. So whenever, whenever they open the freezer, it vibrates. Okay, great. So awesome. they, they're working on a solution for that. They said that they think they no need to put some sort of absorbent pads um, <laughs> in there. And despite the fact that it wasn't spec'd out for that location on the plan, yeah. they're not taking any responsibility. Yeah. They should be able to put oh, rubber, rubber mounts on there. Yeah. Yeah. They're talking about vibration. rubber mounts or something, but it hasn't been resolved. Like a mile? So you schedule like you not even, not, no, <laughs> nowhere, no, when they're not opening the refrigerator, yes. <laughs> not, they, just, they just, oh, it's, they got it up you know, on, on one story. Instead of putting it up two stories, they're like, ah. Kind of tired. It's good enough here. And what type of response are we getting from them? When we're getting well, you know, they came in and they've had engineers and they've had several people look at it. They had an initial fix where they tightened all the ductwork and it worked for a little bit, but now it's back to vibrating. So they're they're looking at that again. As well um, as building meeting, that was the which was back in December, I think was that was what was reported to us that there was no work. It was one hundred percent. It was it was better, um, but the, it you, wasn't a long term. You were you were, you were you sick that day. That yeah. But, but yeah. the report was it was the greatest thing in the world at that point. <laughs> right. Apparently but not so I would say it's not quite the greatest thing in the world, but okay. it's better. What are your actual responses? I mean, is it 48 hours, 72 hours when you make a request? Some of the, some of the things have been I'm slow. I'm putting it out there. You're funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> a week it's been an half. issue they've been working That's on also since. also funny. After 48 or 72 hours, they hit the delete on the email. <laughs> <laughs> Does that count as a response? Oh! <laughs> All right. Um, and then I guess the last thing I had was, you know, from, from a punch list standpoint, I know Toby's working on a punch list and um, Bob Bullock is working on a punch list. Do you think it would be worthwhile to get the staff involved and have, you know, every single, you know, every single eye on the place and have everyone, even if we get the same thing 10 times? Yeah, I think Lisa's been getting um, pretty consistent feedback from, right. from staff when something's not working right. and she has compiled a list. Right. But to put out one more um, Saying, email to everybody just, go just through, checking. Every single person, go through your room if sure. there's anything and everything because it's, it's one of these things, if we don't fix it now, fix it now yeah. we're going to be paying for it. So, I mean, you know, sure. and we've paid them $30 million that they should be able to have it be perfect. <laughs> yep, I can ask you would think. about that. What happened to the, uh, were we investigating the, the gym floor? The we are still floor? investigating that the gym floor. That is ongoing. They're actually bringing in uh, a guy to do, was it called a Spalding test? Yeah, where they. Where a guy literally drops a basketball on the floor to measure where yeah. it bounces. Where the dead spots Don't they have a machine? 
Oh, no, like, remember, I don't know if you were paying to catch that part, but it literally they're going to drop a basketball. <laughs> or paying attention. It's really, or, I, I, it's really oh, high tech. I, I did actually have to leave <laughs> early that no, meeting. Man, so I, you might have yeah. missed that part, but it's it's it a really a, high tech method. It's a Spalding test. That's what These meetings get really, really <laughs> tedious. I, uh, the sports basketball, right? It's a Spalding. Yes. Right? Okay. Uh, they drop it and they'll do it at various things and they'll measure it. Uh, your idea of actually scientifically measuring it would be sensible, but that probably won't happen initially. Um, anyway, <laughs> we're, that's an ongoing thing. Every building committee, I raise, that's my one contribution. Right, cause I, cause I complain incessantly. Because they, they do have a machine that basically we'll shoots a spring down and it measures the elasticity yeah. of the floor with an actual number. You know, this is 4.2, yeah, 4.5. Sure, that makes way too much. Yeah, 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 yeah. basketball. Yeah, you yeah. just get it. It's the <laughs> okay. yeah. If the issue with the up, refinishing, the, though, is, the is being held under on the subflooring. Okay. The gym floor itself uh, was not, it doesn't appear to be put in correctly. The taping job is terrible. Um, the sealant was awful. I don't know. I don't think they put anything on there, personally. Right. I mean, they claim they I'm, put two coats of yeah. super powerful. Right. And you can literally put your, put your finger down and feel the tape. Yeah, the paint. You know, of the, below it. So, I mean, there's no, there's no possible way. But right. the, um, so we did get the side and baskets they, moved. Right. Oh. The ones they did get moved. Actually, about two inches from the wall. Those have yeah. now been moved in a little bit. I don't recall if the lines have been. No, the lines have not. Been no, I don't think they've changed the anything. Lines that are still screwed up, but okay. the baskets themselves are less dangerous. You're still the floor the itself is still correct. Right. The floor itself is still not good. And so that, uh, the um, the way it was explained in December is wait until after winter, and then it was going to be sometime basically in March, April time frame. Mm -hmm. Mr. Spaulding comes out and does his magical right. test, and then we see what happens from there. So <laughs> and, 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 and they originally told us, oh, the, oh, the lines, don't worry, we can fix the lines. It'll just cost you $22,000. And, and Thomas and I almost lost our <laughs> I would have said, no, well, lines. it might cost you. Yeah, yeah. well, that's, that, that, was, that was basically our response. So. All right, um, minutes. Have everyone has a chance to review the minutes? Any uh, changes? Motion to accept the minutes? So moved. Any a second? Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 And next school committee meeting, we have tentatively scheduled for, I don't have my calendar, we'll make it work out. All right, so March 12th. March 12th. My St. Patrick's Day party is the Saturday the 16th, so we're okay. Um, I'm not going to be here that week. <sighs> You're missing my party? <laughs> is it on that week? It's a Saturday. Don't laugh. Uh, no. I'm going to have Saturday a the night. famous party this year. I, I may be all, all around that weekend, but I'm traveling during the week. So oh, okay, all right. During no, my week. party's on Saturdays. So. Okay. We're good. We're good. And that's going to be the public budget hearing. So Yeah, the public budget hearing. That's so Sean's party? Yeah, the budget um, Yeah, at my party. <laughs> we'll have Guinness at the party. <laughs> <laughs> That'd be an interesting budget hearing. When is the budget meeting scheduled? The 12th. Well, no, Public it would be hearings. in the March school committee meeting. So right. if you're oh, okay. not here the so 12th, we might want to look for a different date. You want to look for the 19th? I, I, I'm available the 19th. Yeah. I want to grab my. Or the 5th. Yep. I think the 5th might be too quick. Yeah, because we got. Yeah, I, I can know. do either, any of them. When's the uh, policy meeting that month? I don't have my phone with me. I don't either, Mark. I'm not sure. I think it's the 5th. It's in my car. The battery was almost dead. So it's charging. And also that way I don't have my phone ring during the meeting and interrupt things. I, I'm okay for the <laughs> meeting. I'm, I'm good for March 19th. Here you go. March 19th. Is that good? That. Yeah. Good. Jeff? That works. That works for me. All right. With the, and we won't have a budget meeting after that one since that will be our budget hearing. All right, so just to confirm, the meeting that was originally scheduled for Tuesday the 12th has been moved to the Tuesday the 19th. Yes. When did you say your next but, uh, um, policy is, Mark? You think the 5th? No, it's, I think it's going to actually be uh, the Monday before that meeting, because I think we were doing... The 18th? The 3rd. Weren't we doing it? Like the third policy subcommittee meeting. Yeah. I think we scheduled the March one for the, the fifth, but I'll have to double fifth. check. Okay. I don't have it with it's me. It's either going to be before or after the school committee meeting. <laughs> no, it's not. Necessarily. I thought it was the fifth, right? I think it is. I just don't. I don't have my calendar. I don't it's have either the fifth either. or the twelfth. So okay. The one time my phone's almost okay. dead. Okay. Any other any other business? We're not going into executive session. 
Motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Thank you. I just Thanks, everyone.